All right, so three ninjas podcast, Domino, Hess, Jones, Bobby, and we have the resident fourth ninja in the dojo today who, you know, he out of work, he ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> so, you know, we'll figure we get some good words from our brethren who can let us know more about this uh, writers and actors strike now. Uh, Mr. Chris Green, Chris Green. Wow. Dojo. You, you you stay adding different names. So I guess, I mean, you guys got intro. I guess you could just add all sorts of different names from my ass too. Yeah, man, we got you, man. Yeah. A permanent fiction of Dojo. We talk to you at least once a year, twice a year, something like that. You know, you got to let us know what's going on with everything. Oh, but, of uh, course. This whole uh, Writer Guild Association, Actor Strike, Astra, everything that's going on, it seems like everybody's on strike. Movies have been uh, either delayed or canceled as of right now. People are walking out off of, off of red carpets. Yeah. Um, They just they want more money. Everybody, everybody want more money. Everybody want fair treatment. Uh, by, Bob Iger's a dick. Uh, yeah, that's a fact. This, a lot's going on right now. So, um, I guess, f first of all, Chris, I don't want to get you jammed up in no type of way. You my man. Can you talk about this in particular, just like the strike in general? You won't, you won't get in trouble. You won't be, you know, disowned by the association, nothing like that. You good on all fronts? Yeah, no, nah, we can definitely talk about the strike. So, per rules of our union, man, we can't, like, I can't be promoting shit. Yeah. Um, you know, the the what's what's really the interesting part is I'm supposed to be moderating uh Tampa Bay's Comic Con is coming up uh in two weeks and they've got, you know, some dope actors coming through, man. Some, you know, cast we grew up watching, man, you know, some some great storyboard artists or uh, comic book artists, voiceover artists, and some current working actors. And uh I just sent them an email because I was like, yo, um, I don't know what you guys are going to do, but <laughs> Nothing. yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, it's one of those things where we can talk about, like, for example, if you guys asked me what my experience was working on a particular show, you know, I can say, you know, I had a great time as an actor, you know, and I learned so much about my character. I can give you the generalities, but I can't mm -hmm. go into anything specific. So, like, gotcha. if you mention the show. It, it, I, it doesn't affect me. That's you guys mentioning the show. But mm -hmm. like how I respond is dictated on what you ask. You know what I'm saying? So if it's that sort of thing, you know, we got to just be, you know, on our PR game and careful. We talk about uh, we can't. You know, I can tell people to go on my website and browse through it. I can tell people to go to IMDb and look me up. But that's about the, the extent of what I can say. Mm -hmm. In regards to talking about the strike, yeah, they want us to talk about this shit all day long and how we, you know, we getting dicked over, which is true, man. This is this has been a long time coming, honestly, man. It really has. Mm. Now, I guess, um, I guess my first question is because I think the last strike for actors was about sixty. Well, no, I think I think what I heard was I think the last time the the actors and the writers went on strike together was like 60 years ago or something like that yes, yeah, so this is probably your first like rodeo with this i'm guessing right um have you talked to anyone to see how long this may last like just you know on, right. the, on, the, on the bright side do you know how long it may last like minimum right so yeah you're correct um i think it was 60 or 61 1960 or 61 was when all the unions effectively went on strike against AMPTP and that resulted in us getting residuals because they were like, oh, you got paid for the movie, but all these cats buying VHS and, and whatnot, you know, TV reruns, y'all don't get none of that. So mm. that was, they deaded that quick. Mm. Um, but last time we went on strike as far as the Screen Actors Guild was 1980. After was a separate thing, um, you know, and we merged back in 2012 or something like that. But yeah, that was in 1980, um, mm. and it was the same thing over over money. So this is the first time that I've experienced it. Um, I've been doing this shit since, like, 02, but mm. I've been in the union since 2013 or 14, so about 10 years. Um, so this is the first time that I've gone through actually doing this, but I did witness or, you know, know some writers uh, that when they had the writer strike, or the the walkout back in 08, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and obviously you guys, you know, saw the hit that took. I mean, one of the shows that definitely took a, a ass whooping was was Heroes. Um, mm -hmm. That show was on fire, and then the writer strike hit, man, and completely destroyed that show. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, it, it it's the same thing for them. And, and shout out to the WGA, man. Uh, all my, you know, folks I know in the Writers Guild, and I know some 
writers going through it right now. They're three months in right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as far as for us, this is, I don't see this being over next week. You know, uh, I hope it doesn't last six, seven months, but, you know, keeping it a buck and being realistic. A and PTP is, they're really heavy on this AI shit, man. And they're really thinking that that shit can replace us. And, Cost wise, it just doesn't make sense because people don't realize how much artificial intelligence actually costs to to operate. Mm -hmm. You know, now obviously the whole thing about AI is once it gets up and going, it can self self manage. But the thing is, is startup. You got to get it up and going. Mm -hmm. You know, and people don't realize that. So, uh, and then on top of that shit, man. At the end of the day, you know, if y'all don't know, I mean, I know you guys know, but for everybody visiting the dojo, man, y'all better take y'all ass back to the 80s and, and catch up on the series and watch Terminator, man. Skynet don't play. All right. <laughs> so. Now, well, well, this 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 strike, what I, what, well, the pretense I was under is that this strike had solely to do with money, but when it came to the writer, I seen, it seems to be like money and AI and the directors of the studio wanting to I guess incorporate that with the writers and the writers are like, nah, we, we can't have a bot simulate a motion or write what we write or just take over our job or some portion of our job. Is it right. is it solely money and AI or is it just money or is it AI or is it combo both? both right? So so for us in particular, you know, I mean I know the writers are dealing with AI because from what I understand, again, I'm not in the WGA, but mm. from the ones I've talked to or spoken to their biggest thing is money, obviously, up front, you know, being paid more with inflation. And that's the thing, man. It's inflation. Everybody thinks that we're trying to get rich and, and all that. It's nothing about getting rich. It's nothing about, you know, and, and the crazy part about it is we're asking for increases to survive. Mm -hmm. Like, picture that. You know, everybody got their, you know, of course, actors now, you know, everybody got their side hustle, their jobs, or whatever. Like, for me, you know, I see you guys doing this. Like, to me, I consider what you guys do with the podcast. Like, this is a career. Like, y'all are entertainers. This is what you do. Like, eventually, you know, uh, I'd like to see, you know, you guys would be covered under technically SAG after. Y'all would be SAG members because it covers radio artists as well, podcast artists as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as things go and y'all start getting bread, it's like, okay, this is the career. You know, the hustle right now that the job you do, you know, your side job is like, yo, that's, that's a side hustle or whatever. Imagine going into your side hustle and being like, so um gas has gone up food has gone up lights have gone up water has gone up rent has gone up i've been working for you for 20 years i'm not asking for the raise i deserve i'm just asking for money so i can oh, continue so. to make it to work and live to check the check that's exactly what we are doing that's the crazy shit about it pay my rent right. with the job that i do right this is the crazy shit about it it's like that's all we're asking for it's not like we're asking for yo netflix quarterly you're making hundreds of millions of dollars quarterly. You're damn near bringing in a your billion dollar entity and you act like we're asking you to pay us a million dollars a month. Nah, mm -hmm. just break me off what, you know, is enough for me to sustain and continue. So with the writers, the AI, the AI um, concern is they're basically getting AI. They're plugging in a synopsis to AI, for example. Hey, um, we want to write a movie, a comedy movie about, you know, three black dudes that, do a podcast and then they take over the world and mm -hmm. then they put that in the computer and then it writes the script. Mm -hmm. So you, at that point don't need the right. And all they want the writers for essentially is to proofread it and to make sure, well, it's like, yeah, that's, that's what writers do on the regular. And you're not trying to pay them to proofread. You're like, Oh, I'll give you a hundred dollars. Just look over the script. That's mm -hmm. not how that works. You know what I mean? So that's from what I hear what the writers are, are, are going through as far as actors with us, the AI battle is they want to do motion capture and scans of us. Hmm. So like, for example, I mean, you guys are game heads. So think about, um, so like last of us, right. Even though the show came out after the game. So now because of the popularity of the show, people are buying the game. So let's say they do another last of us part three or whatever. And they use Pedro Pascal's likeness on the video game. He's, he gets broke off of that. He gets a check. Norman Reedus, I think. What, what game is that that Norman Reedus is in? Um, oh, they use like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He Death Stranding. Yeah, Okay. He gets broke off of that. What yeah. they're trying to do with AI is go, all right, we scan Norman's face once. So now you get to use that for eternity and he don't get a check. In perpetuity. Yeah, like <laughs> Right. Right. Like, 
Are you are you you bugging? Are you serious? Nobody, nobody in their right mind. That's just a stupid business move. Nobody would do that. So mm-hmm. they're trying to now do that on live action. They're trying to go, okay, hey, back we need background actors for this football scene. We need to fill the stadium. So instead of paying all these background actors, we'll scan 10 mm-hmm. and just change their skin color and change their age and then pop them in the stands because AI can do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that saves them hundreds of thousands, if not, you know, upwards of, you know, almost a million dollars and paying background for that entirety of that shoot right. and for the next, the next shoot and the next shoot and the next shoot. And so SAG is like, nah, you're not, we're not, we're not, we're not going for that. And then the thing is, it's not just background. They're going to try to eventually bleed that into lead actors, supporting actors, guest star actors. So with the AI for us, that's, that's the deal. And then residuals is another residual payment is another thing. So uh, again, I mean, you guys would know, obviously because you know me but there's a certain show that i was on and footage of me of that show circulates every week Mm -hmm. because people are watching that show and if i told you how much money i got quarterly from that residual y'all y'all think i was you know fucking playing with you i couldn't i I couldn't i couldn't even take us out to get a fucking steak dinner the three of us out to get a steak dinner off that shit yeah like that's ridiculous uh, Actors talk about they got 70 residual checks and only made like 20 some dollars or they right. got like 100 residual checks and only made like, what, less than $60. Yeah. Th- and think about that shit. Like, think about the next, for the job you guys work, think about adding up your next 100 checks you get from work and yeah. that shit ain't enough for a tank of gas. Right. And look at all the hours you put in. That's the crazy mm-hmm. part. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, well, you just go to work and that's not how that shit works. And then it takes us months to film stuff. Mm-hmm. So think about all the hours you put in the work, and then after your hundredth check, that shit is not enough to fill up your gas tank. Mm. Now, um, maybe maybe you got the inside scoop, or maybe you don't. But you know, usually when they talk about technology, they say that it's been around for like X amount of years before it hits the public. Do you know if AI has been around longer than we actually knew about, like Chat GPT and stuff like that? As far as in the industry, I would imagine it has, man. I mean, you know, I think it's just used sparingly. Like, obviously, we know we have the technology to digitally scan and and CG and replace, yeah. you know. And I would imagine with CGI, man, I, I, I would imagine that AI has been involved in some way, shape, or form in some productions, depending on how elaborate the production is. I mean, part of the reason why we invented CG is because of stuntmen were getting, you know, stuntmen and women were getting hurt. You know, you mm-hmm. want to, you know, look at Fast and Furious. I mean, they, they got these damn cars doing all sorts of crazy shit, you know, while the actors are in them. Mm-hmm. And it looks cool, but we're not dumb. We know as general public, like, this car is not jumping off, you know, flying off this bridge. Mm-hmm. And then to go roll a hundred times and then Toretto getting out like, yeah, family. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we know that's not happening. But so I would imagine that AI probably has been around and has been tested in some of these higher budgeted films. Um and the thing about it for actors is like, yo, honestly, at least from the actors that I, and I've talked to actors that are on the board for SAG. I've talked to actors that I rock with that you guys have seen on on some some amazing stuff. And we'll have our group chats. And it's like, yo, it's not even really about the fact that I want you scanning me. It's the fact that you're trying to use that shit in perpetuity. Nah, in my opinion, like, yeah. yeah, if you're going to scan me, you can you use my shit, me. pay me. Pay yeah, me. that's it. Pay me. That's it. You it's can do it, simple. but you got to fucking pay me. It's real simple. You got to pay me and, right yeah, right. and they not they not they're not going for that, man. And it's you know, it, it, I think that's the biggest the, the financial model in this country, man. The people that come from outside this country is American dream. You know, if you come here, you can make it. And people don't realize, man, especially especially for black creatives. And I know you guys know this. It's like we don't even get a tenth of what our white counterparts get. All right, right. cool. You know, like we that's a that's a separate battle in its own. Mm-hmm. But people thinking they come in here and it's like, yo, you're going to get broke off. It's like, no, nah, man, these corporations use the hell out of people. If you think about how much money, like I said, and you just take it for example, Netflix, you look at how much money Netflix makes. They are literally a global company now. As of, I think, 2021, don't, you know, you could Google it if I'm not mistaken. You know, obviously somebody chime in in the chat or, you know, let y'all guys know later. But as of 2021, no, Netflix became a global company. They're available on all seven continents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Netflix is available every now. The content may not be available everywhere, everywhere depending on who you are, because right, the platform, yeah. But the fact that you could be 
if you could get signal, be in Antarctica somewhere and get fuck and watch a Netflix show. Watch a Netflix, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I want to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yo, you got you got to pay me for that, dude. Like, uh, the person sitting there freezing their ass off, but they entertain. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like you got you got to you got to pay me for that. So I, I think with this whole AI thing, man, it I just don't understand the idea that okay, it's going to be cheaper. But at the end of the day, there's no there's no soul behind it, man. Right. There's nothing that you can do on the fly. Like, imagine if what's what's the difference in between you know having you guys type in all right cool we're gonna do the pod like and i'm just gonna type in everything in siri and she's gonna do it for an hour and a half no, no, ain't nobody gonna listen to you for that don't nobody want to hear siri talk right now the whole purpose no. of it is you have human beings interact i don't care if y'all have a script to go by or not there's gonna be those off the cuff moments that you guys have that makes it funny that makes it go damn i didn't think about that mm. you know it's the same thing with performers man like when we get on set yes we have a script but there's those moments where your scene partner will do something and it's like oh shit Oh, they opening the door. Let me react off that. And the director might love that. And the writer, even though they didn't write to go, you know what? Hey, that's insane. I, I rock with it. Cool. And now you have something to put out. AI is not going to be able to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? Now, my last thing, because I know you got to go. Um, is there a world, is it fathomable where these companies actually win and they don't have to give up anything and they get everything? Or at least some of what they're asking for. You talking about us, us as the unions, or you talking about AMPTP, the people we're striking against, the companies the people we're striking, striking against? Is there a world where they actually win? <sighs> is it is it fathomable where it's like, yo, y'all did all this hooting and hollering, y'all went on strike, y'all did this, y'all went without paychecks for X amount of months or weeks or years or whatever, and they right. still got what they wanted? Is that is is there a world where that could exist? And the, the real quick to like interject with that because I forgot exactly who said it or where whatever it came from, but there was someone who, who was basically saying, "I want the we're going to starve them out." So like, right, was, right, yeah. that was concerning. Yeah. yeah, that was a, a the studio exec supposedly. I mean, they haven't confirmed it, but I, yeah, I, I would yeah. imagine they said that shit because then Ron Perlman went on there and was like, "Yo, I'm turning to Hellboy and whoop somebody ass." <laughs> you know, I don't know if y'all saw that, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out to shout out to Ron Perlman because you know he seemed like one of them cats. Um, yeah. So does that concern you? It does, one hundred percent, man. Because technology is the thing about the thing about it is technology is always going to advance. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it. This is why you know I'm able to talk to you guys via a screen on my phone or my laptop. It's because technology advanced. You know, and you can do your podcast and you're not limited. I'm not. I'm not against technology advancing. I'm against the way people use it. That's that's my concern. Is that they find a way to go? You know what? We really don't need actors we don't need human beings for that we don't need writers uh so we're gonna go ahead and just let this computer rock and do whatever it does and unfortunately some people general public getting accustomed to that and going you know what yeah i'm cool with this um it's it is a scary thought man you're talking about like i said somebody who's been chasing this dream for 20 22 years man been a union member for a decade damn near and it's scary. It's like, I, this is what I do. I don't know how to do nothing else, man. Like, if I want it, like, right now, the scary thing for me is looking for a regular job. Like, I'm going to come into an interview and they're going to be like, your work history for I the do? past <laughs> eight years. Right. Well, not even nothing. that, but your work history for the past eight years has been working as an actor. Like, you no, know, we need a real, like, some people are like, you know, we need a real job. Motherfucker, that is a real job. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, this is what I've been doing. I've been coaching actors and acting for almost the last pe- past decade. I don't even remember you know, what it's, what it's like to make a damn schedule for employees. You know, before that, I was in the corporate world, but it's like, I haven't done that for so long. Obviously, it's changed. So a lot of us are having to figure out how to go back into into that because there is a, a strong fear that, you know, the studio has like, you know what, fuck it. This is what we're going to do, and that's that. I think the only thing that, in my opinion, the only thing that would keep this from happening is the general public realizing that's not sustainable because you got to think about it. Even if, because they're not paying us already. And so people are going, well, you know, I saw somebody comment, there's a Twitter thread going on. We had to shut his ass down because, you know, you, you know how I do, man. I'll be letting people have it on Twitter. Um, this dude said, well, our subscriptions are going up and that's why obviously you guys are getting paid. And we had to check him. It's like, that money ain't coming to us. Mm. And so you got to think about that. If they're already raising your Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN, uh, Peacock, fucking Netflix, 
you know, iTunes, Apple TV, mm-hmm. whatever. They're raising all this stuff now and saying, you know, oh, it's because we're giving you more content. What do you think they're going to do when AI take over? This this literally could be a show created every day, even without us. Mm-hmm. They're going to keep jacking the price up. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why would you why would you want that? Why would you want a, a system creating something? And then it's basically you you're still looped into watching the same shit over and over. And even then you're not going to believe it. Like, I don't care how good AI is. You, a good looking video game is not the same as watching a dope ass movie. You know what I mean? Like it, it just, it's just not the same. So I, I think that right now it's just, it's really tough to say, man, it's like a 50, 50. I think they, I think, I think once they realize how much money they're losing with both of these union strike, because the thing about it is, DGA was the director's guild. They already have their contract. They mm-hmm. they got their stuff. Mm-hmm. So people, right. But people don't realize, what are you directing? Nothing. Right. Exactly. If the writers aren't writing anything and the actors aren't acting, what the hell are you directing? So they're losing money every day. I th- you know, I read somewhere, you know, in a reliable trade, one of the trades, uh, the estimated cost is for L.A., not mm-hmm. that's not including New York everywhere else. That's talking about LA because that's the hub, obviously. The estimated cost is between two unions striking is they're gonna lose thirty million dollars a day mm-hmm. because of all these productions shut down. And you gotta remember it's not just production shutting down. So when they shut a production down, that's no more transportation, that's no mm-hmm. more catering, which means mm-hmm. no more food services, no more gas, no more wardrobe, no more dry cleaning. They don't realize how many industries this shit affects. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just even locally in the in the in the city, right? People aren't working, they're not patronizing places so i'm not going right. to restaurants i'm not buying food i'm not getting my coffee in the place i usually get coffee from i'm not doing this i'm not doing that i'm not taking my ubers from where i live to the studio or whatever it is all that stuff right. is not happening now because there's no work those right are so, right those are trickle down effect yeah like, 100%, man. 100%. especially in la right and and the thing is it affects you know and i'm and I'm real shit i'm glad that you guys are, are speaking on this man because you guys are the perfect platform to speak on it because it doesn't just affect film and tv remember it's writers so now these comic book artists that are in the union no more drawing no more mm-hmm. writing comics these video game creators who are you getting to do the voiceovers that's acting that's real yeah. actors can't get them to do it so you got yeah. some silent ass video games mm-hmm. so it's like you know you think you know, again, again when you got like call of duty everybody's on call of duty right who do you think is the commander yelling the, the commands to right. go over there and type some that's an actor real actor <laughs> Yeah, so it's like imagine playing those think games, of that. <laughs> right? Imagine playing those games with no voiceover. Imagine reading comic books, like just looking at the panel. Because some artists can still work on comics because they're you know they're yeah. not you don't have to be an oh, yeah. to be an artist. Yeah, yeah. But as far as the words, all panels, splash panels, no no words. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like imagine that. You know, it's a storyboard basically. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, imagine, um you know, playing some of these, again, some of these video games and all you have is score. There's no words for the characters. You know, there's no, if they're trying to use a likeness, there's no uh, likeness. They have to go back to the, the 2D scroll in Mario. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like drawing him. People don't, people don't realize again, that like you guys were saying, the trickle down effect of how, what that has. And that's why that 30 million estimate to me is believable in the city of Los Angeles, because LA thrives off that mark, off this industry. Yeah. And if the industry is shut down, yo that's a problem like you can't do anything in new york the new york the reason why new york would be able to survive or chicago a little bit more is because theater's more prominent in those markets so theater's not off limits like we can yeah, do theater all day. Yeah, right. right we can do stage all any type of stage or live performance as long as it's not recorded mm. um mm. we can do it you know it has to solely be just a live audience um so and no t and no uh cameras of any kind so for broadcast so we can do that all day and not but you know not that broadway is making shit ton of money but a lot of actors you know that's that's how they you know uh supplement their income is they'll go off broadway off off broadway to do plays black box or whatever and and get that money so it's it's um it's ways to get around it man but again you got to look at the percentage of people that are not going to be working, you know, like for journeyman actors like myself, like people consider me fortunate. And I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm just trying to make ends meet, man. I mean, I've been lucky to be on some, some dope shit, but I still got to audition and, and put my work in like somebody else. But then you got to look at for every, for every Michael B. Jordan, let's just throw him out there. Cause he's, you know, prominent for every Michael mm-hmm. B. Jordan, there's 
there's probably 10,000 brothers that look just like him that'll never get an opportunity to even audition mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's how few jobs there are in so many union actors. That's not even including the non-union. Mm -hmm. That's the union actors. There's a, there's 170,000 of us carrying mm -hmm. union cards and there might be half that amount of jobs in any given year. Mm -hmm. If that, it's probably even less than that. So it's like, yo, most most of us don't even work in a calendar year, which means if we don't work, we don't make enough money to get insurance. Because mm -hmm. mm. because we're in the union, we don't we don't automatically get insurance. We have to qualify for that. Now the insurance is dope that we get. Yeah, but you got to qualify for it. But you got to work a certain amount of time before you can. E exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's. It's a fucked up situation, man. But I've been telling my students and prepping them. Out. I've been telling them for at least since the beginning of the year. How the fuck do you encourage somebody that wants to get into this now? <laughs> and, and and you know what? That came up in class, and that's a good question, man. The plus about anybody trying to get into it now, honestly, they're in a better position than me because they're non-union. So there's a shit ton mm -hmm. of non-union work that, and some cats might pay. The problem is you're not going to make as much money. Mm -hmm. You know, like this stuff they're putting on Tubi or whatever, like. Some of those productions, even though they trash, some of them mm -hmm. cats are getting two hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. You know, depending on how long they all set. Mm -hmm. So you could still work your craft and learn. I mean, not necessarily learning much from some of those sets, but I mean, <laughs> as far as being in front of the camera, right? You can learn and work your craft and get a little bread. There's a lot of non-union commercials. Unfortunately, some of those are in perpetuity or whatever. But you know, you you still have the ability to work and and do stuff. Um, the only thing I can tell them is that, yo, man, if this is what you want to do, the industry is not going anywhere. It's just evolving and changing. Mm -hmm. So you unfortunately have to evolve and change with it. Like that's what happened with social media. All these cats started putting stuff on TikTok, Vine, you know, when it was out, you know, Instagram, all these, you know, cats making all this stuff. You you adapt with it and and do the best you can. But at the end of the day, if this is something that you enjoy doing, there's, there's always outlets. There's always theater. There's always commercial. You know, there's a voiceover stuff. I mean, it may not be the shit that you want to do initially, but until film and TV get back on its feet and AMPTP agrees to what we want, those are the those are the other outlets, man. So, um, and you guys experience. I see you talk about it all the time, Dom, on on, um, on Twitter, man. Everybody their mama because they got a they got a damn Yeti or a sure microphone. Everybody mm -hmm. their mama is in the podcast now, and they know what the fuck. It's like, no, you don't. You just talk yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. You know, your, your content is terrible. You don't know what you're talking about. You're just, it's, it's, you know, it's like everybody knows that. I said it on Twitter. I'll say it to his face. I think Joe Budden by far, if somebody needs to take that microphone and beat him in the head with it. That shit is the worst podcast. Like him, just him is the absolute worst. Like you, you basically are just talking out your ass. Anybody, any guest, anybody that has something to say, you, you go off topic when you don't agree with it or you go, it's, it's like not entertaining to me. Um, mm. but some people rock with it and it's cool, but it doesn't make you because you don't hone the craft, it doesn't make you great at it. You know, if you're gonna sit there and take the time to, all right, what are we gonna talk about? How are we gonna lay it out? What's the production value? Okay, we need to evolve, we need to do that. To me, you're a craftsman, you know, you're entertaining people, but you're working, you're crafting, adjusting, and and developing a brand. And that's what actors have to do. Anybody coming in, I'd be like, yo, just figure out what your niche is. If you're the Steve Urkel type character, then go 100% with that. There's nothing wrong with that. We need those in the world. Just like just as much as we need the 50 cents, you mm -hmm. know, just for every will, we, for every will, we got to have a call to, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we need, we need these people to balance it out because that's how people are in the world. Everybody ain't the fly dude, you know, everybody ain't the nerdy dude, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, you gotta, you gotta find what your, your break is and go for that. And then hopefully this shit, like I said, won't last too long. Um, it'll open back up and they'll realize how much money is costing everybody and, and things will go from, from there. But, um, you know, the, the hardest part is going to be not being able to, to, to perform and be creative the way I want to on a, on a higher level because of that, but also not being able to have people, you know, what, you know, you can't promote your shit. I can't right. go, Hey, you know, I happen to be turning on the TV and X, Y, Z is on. Y'all should go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you no, can't yeah. say nothing. Yeah, you know, and it sucks, man, because we worked hard on that shit. Yeah, man, that, that fucking sucks. I because everything I'm hearing, everything I'm seeing, it doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon. I keep hearing things like, you know, six months, eight months. They don't right. want to, you know, 
boil over into the new year, but they said the new year lineup was going to suffer because of that. And, you know, what's going to happen with as far as like, you know, scripted versus reality versus right. uh, other types of content, whether it be they start putting podcasts on TV or, you know, they start getting right. whatever, whoever. But it's just like it's it's not looking good for the foreseeable future, but I, I'm pretty sure in the long run. Things will things will work themselves out. I know you know these execs and all these big companies are, are going to be mad about not getting a two hundred fifty million dollar bonuses and shit. Right. But, you know every everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to work out. The way it's supposed to work out. I don't think I don't think you know evil. I won't call him evil, but I don't. I'm, he's eh, okay. Evil. I don't know that shit. Bob Iger said it's kind of yeah. Evil. That shit. Bob yeah, Iger said kind of well, starve them out. It sounds kind of evil, especially with yeah. when they're bonuses, making million dollar bonuses for doing nothing, not creating anything, just, just owning the company. There. You're being the yeah. COO, CEO, CFO. Yeah. Bob Bob Iger can look nuts. You heard it here in personal pocket. I'll say it to his fate. Like I don't give a shit if I'm never in a Marvel movie. Bob Bob Iger is trash because him saying it wasn't even a fact of saying that. The fact that he went on on a on a public forum, a public forum. Not even that. He went on a public forum and said what the actors and writers are asking for is absolutely ridiculous. Bitch, you make two hundred estimated two hundred and twenty seven million a year mm -hmm. to literally create nothing. Nothing. And Nothing. you sit here telling the people that are making you that two hundred twenty-seven million a year. It's ridiculous for us to ask for wages and insurance and stuff for us to be able to survive and live like a fucking human being, doing what we love to do. Are you crazy? Like that dude? Yo, he he better he better take that two hundred twenty-seven mil and keep his ass up in Alaska, wherever the hell retreats he going on. Because I promise you, he show, he show up in LA and New York and somebody catch him, he going to catch a face. And I'm not, I don't condone violence. I'm not condoning any of that shit. I'm just telling it like it is. Yo, he's, he publicly said that with without hesitation. Yeah. I'll be training and doing MMA like Zuckerberg or whatever, because he going <laughs> to catch, he going to catch a fade with that shit from somebody straight up because that was, that was insensitive and it was bullshit, man. Like, why would you say that? Of all things, why would you say that? You yeah, know what I mean? Like, you, that. yeah, 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 yeah. He already is. I mean, you guys. Yeah, he already is. I'm that. talking about like physically, like in person. Like, you know, you can say that shit behind the screen, but you got to see right. people eventually. Eventually, this strike gonna be over. A war show is gonna be back. People are gonna come back into work. You got to see somebody about that shit. Right, a hundred percent. And you taking, you know, food out of families, you know, mouths. You taking insurance away from people, man. Um, and and. You know, it's 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 gonna happen. And then again, you already see the effects. Like they've been working on that blade movie for damn near two years and now. Now yeah, it's nothing. You know, oh, yeah, oh. you know what I mean? It's 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 you know, the strike happened and it is what it is. And so it's like it's already affecting a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff, man. And and that's even the conventions. Like people are like now, you know, they're paying a uh, Comic Con, man. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con week. took a huge yeah. hit. It's this week. Huge. Was Thursday. Right. And they was they were just recovering from, from fucking COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They yeah. were just recovering from COVID and now and now this. And, now this. and the crazy shit is like people saying, you know, I don't even want to go to the convention because hell, What's what can they there? sign? What can't they sign? Can they take pictures? Can they can they do anything like other than just sit there and look at us? Like, what's the point of going to the convention? And that's the thing that you know, is, is also interesting is, you know, some of these places like these conventions are year round and some of these places bank off like these local vendors and stuff bank on having these conventions because like, yo, we make money October. Mm -hmm. We make money November. We make money during the summer or whatever. And now you have somebody coming to a convention and all you can ask them is what's their favorite ice cream? <laughs> like, that's not, you know, you, yeah, that's no, not going. That's not work. Not going to have anybody there and they can't promote. They can't talk Nothing. about what's upcoming. So all the stuff that maybe was down the pipeline, we was like they're, they're casting for that new Superman movie. Maybe some of those people would have ended up at the convention is to talk about what they've started to do. Deadpool just started filming, but that had I'm sure that that, that had to pause, I'm sure. Yeah, like third day they paused that shit. Yeah, just because right. you know, they might have been there to talk about what they had to start doing. But now that you can't promote anything, we can't talk about anything that we're doing. So we're not going to be here. So like, what is the convention even? I really look. I mean, I'm sure there's there's going to be stuff there because it's still right a comic convention, right? So there's still going to be merchandise for sale and all that kind of stuff. So it's there's still something there. But in terms of like the the aspect where people we're are going like, to sit in the that fucking movie, all that shit, yeah, all that show, stuff, TV show shit. That's a big done. big draw. It's a big draw, big big, especially right. for San Diego. Yeah, right, right, because they they. 
they're looking forward to getting the inside scoop there. They're looking forward to talking to, you know, their favorite actor or whatever. And it, and it sucks, man, because I even sent out some questions as moderator. And I was like, OK. And some of the information I got back was good, you know, um, and they and some of the information they're checking on. So I'm like, you know, what if somebody wants to take a picture with an artist and the artist can take a picture and they're not wearing any of the merch, but the fan is wearing the merch. Mm -hmm. How does that work? You right. know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, uh, on paper, without digging deeper, it's like as long as the artist is not wearing anything, sure. we can't control what other people wear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's we're not technically promoting. I'm just, hey, I'm taking a picture with somebody. I, You know, you don't see me pointing to it. You don't see me <laughs> saying nothing about it. I'm just taking a picture. I can't control that they got on this thing from the show. Yeah. Um, you know, signing autographs, I don't believe is a big deal. Um, but again, they're still trying to they're still trying to figure that shit out, man. I think if you personalize it, it's technically not promotion. You're you know, you're signing something for somebody that's personal, you know. But I think if you're writing like a quote on the show or something when you sign it or whatever on a movie, then, you know, yeah, you're technically promoting it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's so many it's so many fine things that you know, we got to watch out for and be careful for and what we say and we don't say. And that right there itself is making some actors go, yo, I guess this is the perfect time for me to take a social media break, which sucks because, you know, some of the fans interact with them. Like, even as simple as like, yo, man, I heard you was having a bad time. Keep going, man. You all good. Like some of these people get motivated by, you know, these actors and shit like that. So the fact that some of them are like, man, I'm not even trying to get dinged for tweeting. Have a good day. You know, because right. my character said that in episode two. Like, nah, I'm not, come yeah. on, man. You know what I mean? So they're like, yo, I'm just not even going to tweet anything. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 a dirty game, man. It's it's always about money, though, at the end of the day. You guys are on point with it. You started it with that, and that's that's what it is. It's always about money, man. It's just when somebody's asking for just enough money to live, there, there's a problem with that to me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, especially if they're deserving of it. It's one thing if, you know, I just became a member of the union and I did one TV show with one line. And I'm like, yo, I need that Denzel money. Like, <laughs> yeah, all right, bro, yeah, yeah. knock it off. But for some of us who have been in the game for long and already proven ourselves, it's like, yo, I'm asking you to, to, to pay me my value so I can take care of my daughter or I can take care of an elder or I can take care of my wife, husband. I can take care of my damn dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm just, I'm asking you to, so I don't have to go get three or four jobs. And that's any industry, man. Nobody should do that. I'm an advocate for teachers. My niece was a teacher, man. And one of my mm -hmm. students uh, teaches as well. And teachers, are, are shit, they're the most underpaid. We're bad, but teachers are the most underpaid profession in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's why I told people, I was like, yo, man, if they do this shit to teachers, these are the people that are teaching these billionaire assholes. The next generation. <laughs> You're right. I'm like, they, they're the ones that taught these billionaire assholes. And if they treat them like this, what the hell you think they're going to do to us? Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's hopefully it's, it's, it's over soon, man. But I'm going to do what I can to still, you know, entertain people, man. Again, we can self-produce content. We can put out content. As long as it's not affiliated with any of the major streamers or major studios, actors can't do it. And SAG and our union is good enough to try to work with us to get some money because they're like, yo, we're going to grant interim um, uh, interim permissions or signatories, uh, which basically means that if you're of a certain budget and you're not connected with any of the major studios, they'll grant some SAG actors, uh, you know, waivers essentially to, to work on independent productions. So, which, <clears throat> you know, we have contracts like that in place, but you know, it it would have allowed for like a major distributor to pick it up. Now mm -hmm. it's more so like, hey, if you're gonna do something, put it up on YouTube. Cool. Um, we have to look it over, and if it's all right, cool. They can put it on YouTube. They can put it on Instagram. They can put it on Twitter. They can put it on Facebook threads, whatever. Um, you know, um, but it won't be able to go on obviously anything like you know Netflix or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you'll still be able to see some decent independent, you know, material. Hopefully some of the film festivals will still be able to thrive off that, you know, because that's still kind of boost the economy a little bit. You know, local theaters hosting a film festival. Mm -hmm. So people buy tickets and, you know, popcorn and all that. Hopefully some of that still be able to go on and SAG is working with, with that and, and, and whatnot and, and trying to get that done. So maybe it'll help some of the writers out as well. I don't know what their guidelines are as far as the WGA, but you know, we're, we're doing what we can to try to make it work, man. But ultimately, it's, it's up to the NPTP, man. And, and 
the ball is in their court court at this point because we've already said, yo, this is what we want. And we're not taking less than that. We've already kind of whittled down what we want to make it easier for you. And if you ain't trying to meet that, then shit, we might as well not work because hell, we're damn near doing slave work as it is now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Chris, anything in closing, man? Anything else you want to say? Anything we didn't cover? Anything? Any any other important <clears throat> points that we need to know or, you know, should be known by either uh, the stipulations of the strike or just from any association, like anything in closing? Um, absolutely, man. So SAG has put out a site that anybody can access. You don't have to be a member. Hmm. And it's called SAGAfterStrike.org. So S A G A F T R A S T R I K E dot org. SAGAfterStrike.org. Anybody can go on there. You don't have to be an actor. And there's a there's a tab on there for FAQs and um there's also a, a take action tab um where you can like you know, it, it lets people know like, hey, there's certain places you can donate, even just tweeting out stuff, even if you're not an actor. Hey, tweet, share, let that stuff go viral and let it trend. But there's also uh, SAGAfterFoundation.org, which is the only legit one that I know of mm. um, and feel comfortable saying they have a foundation where like these people out there picketing in the heat and in the rain, man, they need umbrellas, they need water, they need food. You know, our members that are doing that, even if you go donate a dollar or whatever. It helps to do that so we can pick it in front of these studios and they can get that reminder every day. Like, yo, man, we need to stop, you know, stop playing and 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 help these people out. So if you want to do something like that, man, and you and you want to help for your like your listeners and whatever, you know, they can do stuff like that. Um, the only other thing I'll say, too, is don't. There's this thing of, well, we we got to support the actors by not, you know, I'm going to cancel my Netflix and cancel. We're not asking you guys to do that. Mm -hmm. We're not asking you to do that. It puts us in a rock and a hard place. Because canceling your subscriptions means that, you know, we get zero residuals. Mm. So even these little pennies that we have coming in, there's still something. There's something. So, you know, don't cancel your subscriptions at all. You don't have to do that. You can still watch whatever you want to watch and stream whatever you want to stream and all that. That's that's cool. That's fine and dandy. Because at the end of the day, it's not like it's going to be any new content coming up anytime soon. So, um, we're simply just saying like, yo, understand that this shit ain't easy. And that when you see actors venting on social media or tweeting about it or whatever, you know, just, just support, even if it's, it's not necessarily financial, a simple retweet, man, that's support in itself, you mm -hmm. know, because there's followers that you guys have that I may not have, or that the next actor may not have, or the next writer may not have. So just show support because at the end of the day, like I said, you guys got to remember, man, it was us. And I'm including you guys in it, too, because, you know, shit, I was listening to the podcast, you know, um, and the reruns and shit while we was going through, you know, no work and pandemic and all this other bullshit. Like I was listening to everything, you know, playing video games, just like you guys. People got to remember that, man. You know, when we was when the country shut down, the world shut down. And even when it started coming back and things were still kind of you can't leave your house. It was movies, it was books, it was podcasts, it was radio shows, it was music, it was all this all this creative art form that was keeping motherfuckers from losing their damn mind mm -hmm. in the house. So, you know, you, you, you gotta put some respect on that and 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 appreciate it at the end of the day. So that's really it, man. You know, and as always, I appreciate you guys for, you know, inviting me back in, like always, man. Tell Bobby he's a scrub because he didn't show up. <laughs> You're a crumb, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Out there doing some whole shit. Yeah. Uh, Ho hopefully it's some real life shit. Hopefully he didn't, you know, nah, get away yeah. from the show because of some pussy, man. It's always nah, going to be. <laughs> but um, Chris, man, as always, man, we support you. We fuck with you. We love you. Uh, hope everything goes good. Hope you're able to, I guess, sustain a living and, I guess, just be okay in this whole thing. I know it's not like exactly when the world shut down with COVID, but it seems right. pretty on par. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just hope everything goes well with y'all, and I hope y'all get back to work sooner than later, man. So. Hey, much much love to y'all, man. I appreciate you cats, man. You know, y'all fam. So uh, hopefully I get to get back on it and, and get out there to see you guys soon, man. I'm trying to make this happen before the cold. Every time I come out there, it's always in the damn cold, man. I ain't trying to do that again. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, come back, come back when it's warm, short weather, yeah, man. Yeah, summer. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know I'm saying? You know, I got to see, see how y'all boys get down out there, man. I haven't been in CT in the summer since I was little, so... 
Oh yeah, come on, man. We could show you around some some brunch spots, there's, there's some there's some places with some nice sundresses. That I got you. Oh, okay, you know, hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, man. Chris, be easy, man. We'll talk to you soon, man. All right, Don. I appreciate y'all. Yes, all right, man. Peace. Peace.